All right, so a lot of people wonder, why did you choose Ultimate Sandbag to do a bent row anyways? Well, for one, the bent row is a highly underrated exercise. Not only is it amazing for building the upper back muscles, but it's basically a hip hinge and a plank. So we know those two foundations are important for things like deadlifting, overall back health and stability, and progressing our functional strength. So a lot of people miss out on bent rows because they don't understand how to teach them well, and they don't understand how many options are available to them. Now, the ultimate sandbag allows us several advantages. Number one, the weight distribution from the handles is much higher than any other implement, meaning that a, let's say, 80 or 100 pound ultimate sandbag is going to be significantly heavier in its feel than you would, let's say, in the same weight of a barbell, dumbbell, or even kettlebell because there's no weight in the handles and the center mass is far away. Number two, we'll kind of have many different grip options that we can utilize. So again, we can create different levels of stability or challenge to the upper body, depending upon how we grip. Third, we can just move in different patterns so much easier to allow us to challenge the upper body and the movement overall. Now, where do people go wrong in the bent row is they don't teach the feet first. So a lot of times when people go into that hip hinge to do a bent row, they're relaxing their feet and they feel like they have no stability. So they round, they elevate, they arch, they chicken the movement, right? When they shoot the head forward because they have no foundation stability. So the first thing I want to do is grab the ground with the feet, go back into my hinge so my shins stay relatively vertical. From here now, if I keep gripping my feet, it's very hard for me to move my trunk around. So the first thing I want to do is just make sure I can maintain that level of stability. Now I'm going to start with our neutral grip because it's going to allow me to pull the handles apart, really engage the lat in the upper back. So I still want to see a retraction of the upper back as I go into it. But if I keep using my feet, you won't see me dump my pelvis like so many people do in a bent row. If I relax my feet, my back off of sun feels load, and this becomes much, much heavier to lift. So the foundation, and for everything we're going to do, we need to make sure we own that position. Now, you saw me then progress. I can make the same way feel heavier by changing my stance. So if I go into our spinner stance, like heel-toe, and I go into our row, now there's more demand upon the lower body, core, and upper body to produce the movement. Now, a lot of people don't like this because they have to use lighter weight. But we know the upper body strength in real life and sport is dependent upon what my lower body and core can stabilize. So if we lay on a bench and we just do rows, we're not going to get the same benefit for the upper body in real world or sport strength than if we do it in a bent row position. So when I'm in this position, foot's planted, ball foot's planted, same concept, shin stays vertical as I do the row. I can elongate that step further and further back to make that feel increasingly more challenging. So lots of options just by changing my body position. I can also change the direction of my body. So if I move more laterally, I can start to challenge my body in a different way. So I'm gonna to have to have frontal plane stability and resist that rotation. Imagine doing a push-up row that's far more productive, right? Because I have a more functional position, I'm rowing, but I'm having to distribute my weight. Now, both feet have to be active, because otherwise I'll collapse and I'll rotate. So this foot has to be driving in, this foot's driving in, and I'm still going to aim for that vertical shin. This time, I'm going to aim to split the ultimate sandbag in half with my shin, because a lot of people, they won't shift over enough when they get in position, they're here, and then they do this off a row. What I want to do is it's going to be a smaller step than if I were to lunge, much smaller, pull the handles apart, get to that midpoint. Now from here, I'm going to row. And that is a whole new way of training the upper body. I can go into rotation as well. So now, a lot of times, if we're going to do something powerful, I'm going to add rotation to it. I'm going to add rotation by planting through my feet. So my feet are wider than hip width apart, slightly turned out. I'm going to pivot as this foot presses down, and I still want to get a vertical shin. A lot of people are going to sink back like this, and they're missing the hip hinge. I want to be over the top. So if I take our ultimate sandbag here, get my feet set, pivot, make sure I get in the position first, 
then I perform a row. And the cool thing is, I can just stay on that side or I can go from side to side. And it's gonna feel a little different emphasis upon one arm to the other. But now I'm building the strength to integrate my body in a more functional way to both build more upper body strength and muscle, but also have that carry over to real life and sport more effectively. So these are some key ideas from our dynamic variable resistance training system. And next time I'm gonna show you how we manipulate grip with some of these options. And you're gonna see there's so many options you have available to building upper body strength in unique and effective ways with our DVRT system.